everybody, it's Karen from Art for Acrylics. How are you? Um, back at it again today, feeling healthy, feeling perky. Um, this is very impromptu, but I just hung up some new artwork inspired by my um, collaboration with Crystal Coast Originals with Amanda, video number 350. And I took down the art and I think I'm ready to part with the little ones. And so it, this is just totally impromptu. If you're interested, and these, I want to sell them as a diptych because they do go together. As these guys here, they're six inch gallery wrap canvases uh, inside illusion floater frames. That's what the back looks like. They're resin, ready to hang the whole shebang. I made a little rhyme there. And uh, if you're interested in the set, give me a shout at waterfallcolics at gmail.com. I am inspired by these now that I've pulled them off the wall. So I'm gonna go look at my greens and find a, a pretty shade of green and build around it and do a deconstructed bloom, maybe, or maybe just a big bloom on the top of 24. Let me get you down. Okay guys, I know it's only August, but I, I am enamored by this color right here. This is Arteza Pearl Olive Green. This is the color of the day, so I built around it. And I also have mostly all two paints today. Um, Pearl Pistachio Green, also Arteza. I have a uh, PBO Gold, their Iridescent Precious Gold. And then one pigment by Primary Elements, Autumn Leaf, which is a gorgeous shade. So we're gonna use those. And Sal Activator color today is Payne's Gray. I wanna dig into my house paint a little bit and hopefully get some white cells. So I might be at it a little bit longer with the hair dryer. We'll see how that goes. And yeah, let's just go. So let's start with Let's we'll start with the pearl green. Let's start down here. Paints are a little thicker today too. Those are two paints. I should probably, then let me see this. I should probably put a dollop of varnish. We'll do one and see what happens with that. I don't think I put enough. Normally when you use two paints, I don't really change my pouring medium recipe. I just add a dollop of varnish to get the consistency I want. But we'll see how this goes. And the gold on top. Maybe a hint more green, like that. And then my cell activator, my golden pins gray. I think I'm gonna try, always, always cool air, but I'm gonna try high fan.
Oh my gosh, love the color combo. I think I dug a little too deep into my cell activator. I'm pretty sure that's down to the canvas. Let me see. Yeah, look. So, I mean, I can puff on it. Uh, well, let me see. The thing is, it'll sew up there. But when I go to deconstruct it, the paint's going to roll right over that because it's so thin in that one spot. But that's okay. Because I'm loving, this is what I'm after. Like all this stuff on the... The periphery of that center like all around here and this is just gorgeous so so far so good let's go for the next one and we'll put it up here oh gosh see i already forgot the order uh, I think this is next, autumn leaf. And then my precious gold. And let's, this time, let's wiggle both colors, both shades of green on top. Give a wiggle of both. And then the cell activator. High fan again, too, because I like that I was able to blow further out than normal. And as long as you stay behind your cell activator um, with your hair dryer, don't get ahead of it um, and chase after it, uh, then you'll get the cells and lacing to go out with it. Like here in particular, it worked really well. Here, too, but it's going to come off the edge. All right, same deal with the hair dryer. I'm just letting this collect here a little bit in the middle. I'll give that a puff too, but that's already um, pretty deep. I was, you know, trying to dig into it because then when I, when I follow it out, I get the white. And like I was saying, I wanted some, some white in this one. Um, there's a ton of paint right here. And I think it's, if I take my stick again and wipe it off and do this, it's going to be really super thin. So, you know, if I go to, um, Go to tilt this, it's going to uh, roll over that center piece. I'm staring at this thinking, man, it'd be fun to spin this one out just a little bit and leave it. But um, there are parts that where the paint is already like smushed into this middle because middle, there's so much paint here. If you can tell by this this uh, shape right here, that is the paint. It's like, I, I need to go somewhere. So it's already starting to smoosh this middle and the same thing, there's so much paint here, it has to go somewhere that it's starting to creep into this center. So like, it's really interesting if you just stop and stare and like, just watch the paint slowly. I mean, it's a glacier pace, but you can see it moving and squishing up into that middle right there. I don't think it's even worth me giving a puff. I 
Let's see if I can get some more white cells right there before we tilt this out. In the meantime, I'm going to throw some white house paint on my corners here to help things slide around. Here and here. Honestly, like if all I have left at the end of tilting is like this stuff, I'm going to be happy because <laughs> that's what I love the most or is those areas. There should be plenty there and there. All right. Now it's just about collected right there. I'm seeing if I'm going to stick my finger in anything. And I don't think so. This still is quite indented. Actually, this is too. So what I was just talking about at this part here, like filling in these two areas, I'm going to exercise some patience and turn the camera off for five minutes and just let that do its thing. Yep. All right, I'm back. It filled up a little bit here. It's still indented in both spots, but not nearly as bad. So I think I'm going to go for it. Let the fun begin. Let the shenanigans begin. And so you can see the middle there where all the paint is. Yep. So let's use that weight and bring this one part to this corner. I actually kind of want a little bit of a bikini corner there. I'm going to leave that other corner white. See, it's going to fill up this corner here. So we're just going to kind of wiggle it down. This one might end up looking a little more bloom like than I normally do when I deconstruct, but we'll see. We'll see how crazy I get. See, I'm in love with, the, with this part. Not real thrilled with the composition though, so I'm gonna keep going. You tell him, Dusty. How dare that mailman come to our house? You get him. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna take off the center part of that one bloom. And put it in the corner. Let me stare at this. Liking it, liking it, feeling it. <laughs> I know what's wrong with this. Do I care? Do I want to leave it? Let me stare a second. And it kind of straightened out that part. Opened up this part. Am I done? I'm staring, I'm staring, I'm staring. Okay, I think this might be personal preference. And I think I'm going to make two of these today. Um... I love this for a couple reasons. The composition, I think, is spot on. I think 
the, the wispiness of all this stuff that I blew out where I got the white cells deliberately is amazing. What I don't like, and this is going to be personal preference because I think some people are going to love this, is I'm not sure I like Payne's Gray with the green and gold. Now, gray, green, and gold go fine together. But for whatever reason, I'm not feeling that, like that color, um, this color with the rest of this. Or though, I have a feeling my, when I show this to my husband, he's gonna be like, you're crazy, which is what he usually tells me. <laughs> Whenever I get ultra picky, he's, he'll roll his eyes at me and be like, you're crazy, that's great, shut up. <laughs> you can sell that, that's what, except he'll say it in a much deeper voice, just so you know. <laughs> um, making sure I have coverage. I'm going to say ta-da and leave this, but first I'm going to do a, um, a test to see how much paint is in the middle. I am going to go again. So you're probably going to get this video on Tuesday in a twinsy on Saturday, and you guys can tell me what you like better. If you like it, I'll do the same colors, and all I'm going to do is change the cell activator color to like, I don't know, carbon black or something. And we'll do the same thing with carbon black. But uh, where's my stick? I'll wipe it off. Oh, uh, see, that's a little deep for me. You know, you see that? I don't like that much on there. I think I can go this way and like take off a little bit of this and just take off a little more paint without really hurting anything. Like I can squish that and have a little bit of that roll off. That won't bother me. We'll leave ha like half a bloom on because I always like that look anyway. And roll it back this way and that should be fine. That shouldn't hurt anything. Let me see how much rolled off that side. Oh yeah. So got a whole bunch more paint to roll off. Wipe off my stick. Yep, see, not as bad now. So, ta-da. Uh, let me clean up and get you guys down for a close-up of this one. And then, uh, let me know if you like it, but then also reserve judgment for my next video um, with the black cell activator and let me know which one you like better. Hold on. Okay, good grief, you guys. <laughs> so I moved things over to my other counter so I could show you the wet results and the dry results up close. And I put down a clean tarp. And then it's only like in the 70s here today, or now it just hit 80. But we turned off the air conditioner and I decided it was stuffy. So I went into my living room where we have like a floor fan and I turned on the fan and I came back in and the fan had caught the edge of my tarp and blew it right over this whole edge. <laughs> so I was forced, as you could tell by the mess, to tilt it off, which changed the composition somewhat. I mean, it's still pretty. Um, I liked it better when it had like this part was like going all the way up, but you know, classic Karen move as far as I'm concerned. So it's still super pretty and light and fluffy. And this one, I don't think I varnish. I don't think I resin this one. It's too soft. This one will just get varnished. It's 12 by 24. Um, there's the precious gold with the two shades of green. And then obviously the Payne's Gray cell activator. I do love the white cells everywhere. And I love that little hard edge right there because it's at the bottom um, and that part. And then this wrecked bloom up here, super pretty. I'm super happy with the, the fade of the green and gold cells into the white. I love that, that's just me. And I love the top here too. Stupid shadow there, like there. These wispy lines, the wispies. I'm a sucker for a good wispy. 
Let me come up high. There it is wet. I'm going to wait until Saturday to show you the dry results um, from this video and Saturday's video. That way we can do a comparison of dry results between the same colors, but um, I'm going to use, I think, carbon black in the next pour. And this one has the Payne's Gray, and you guys can tell me which you like better. Because um, the jewelry is still out for me on the Payne's Gray. Uh, yeah, let me say goodbye. Hey guys, uh, let me know what you think of this one. I am super curious to see um, what it would look like if I use all the same colors and simply change the cell activator color from the Payne's Gray to Carmen Black. So I'm gonna do that right now. That'll be Saturday's video. And then I'll show the dried results um, side by side and we can we can decide which one we like best or not at all or you guys can tell me what you think and uh, Yeah, so until then uh, have a great week. Take care. Please like share and subscribe That's my little bobblehead move <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys soon y'all take care peace out